I would like to welcome everyone uh, to joining us for a webinar, uh, which we call the Double Your uh, Testing Speed. Uh, everything we're going to talk about today is parallel testing, test sharding, and how to uh, scale your test automation in ECI for native solutions such as XUA Test and Espresso. Uh, today, we're going to focus specifically on the uh, iOS stack. And talk about XE test, XUA test, and how to run them in parallel. I would like to introduce uh, um, uh, our speaker today, Julia. Uh, uh, Julia is uh, uh, a software developer engineer at Test, working with Ingenious for a while. Um, she uh, specifically works on a SIFT open source framework, which we're going to dive in during today's um, discussion. And myself, Igor, uh, I am the founder of Ingenious uh, and the CEO, currently a CEO uh, that runs the company. Um, and uh, uh, today we're going to cover interesting things, uh, what we call pain points, right, or agenda, um, why we actually do parallel testing, what's the purpose for that. Uh, the most important aspect that a lot of people get confused, parallel testing versus test sharding um export native solution versus SIFT because export does have a parallel execution built in into it and we're going to talk about the open source framework SIFT why we recommend SIFT I mean uh, we're going to go through the benefits of the open source framework we're presenting today um how to configure it from scratch um detailed instructions step by step um and obviously the benefits of SIFT um I would like to remind everybody that we do have Q&A session at the end. So please make sure to, uh, uh, there in the Zoom, there is Q&A section. Write your questions in advance. During presentation, if there's some question pop up in the head, please write there. Right at the end, we're going to go uh, one by one and try to answer them uh, as much as we can. So please do not hesitate to write your questions. Um, and uh, let's get started. Again, a uh, quick uh, reminder who we are. Ingenious is the uh, consulting company. Um, mostly uh, we are focusing on team extensions and managed delivery. Uh, we are a mobile first company. We're focusing on mobile solutions and test automation is one of our main focuses. That's what we're good at. Um, we actually have a successful uh, track record in the companies as, as Grammarly and Apple, as well as the Samsung. Uh, yes, uh, you will be asked why you actually have, you know, helping Apple because Apple actually building XUI test and exit test and, you know, X code and everything, but didn't have, do not have, uh, you know, enough people with the expertise to build enterprise level test automation, uh, test automation solutions. That's why we help them to do that. And um, I think that's uh, what uh, we are. We uh, have a ample of knowledge and how to bring test automation to the next level. Um, that's amazing. And that's why we're all here, right? Because obviously if you write uh, one test uh, and then uh, realize that, uh, you know, it works fine uh, in your Xcode environment or your Android studio, then you write another five, then you have to run it somewhere. And then you run an issue when you have hundreds of them, right? So, the problem, the common industry problem, this has nothing to do with the ingenious or uh, you specifically. Uh, this is something that very common in each and every company. Uh, speed reliability is number one issue of any test in CI. And now we're talking not only about the functional test, the unit tests also run in the same bucket. Um, so again, running tests, XCI tests in CI encounters uh, issue of stability because the flaking is number one problem how to get test you know run like it was 99 percent stability at least and speed right let's say that your ci system uh runs on average for the mobile applications about from anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes and if you have more than 500 tests written written in xua test framework uh, it's probably going to take you like seven hours, right? So how are you going to solve this? So I'm going to pass my word uh, to Julia. She's going to take over this presentation. Again, reminder, do not hesitate to ask questions in Q&A uh, section in Zoom. We'll go one by one answer at the end. Julia, it's all yours. Yeah. 
Okay, so first of all, I'm happy to see you guys today. And I have to mention that you don't have to write anything down uh, because this uh, webinar is going to be recorded and sent uh, on your emails. Uh, so you can just relax and enjoy the topic, uh, which is important in our industry. It's uh, about parallel testaments, uh, as it was said. And uh, yeah, uh, we have this uh, common industry challenge, and we know this from our experience. And um, if you have 50 tests to run, it's okay for you to run them after every code commit, and uh, you can run them really fast and um, as often as possible, as often as needed after every um, change in the code. But uh, let's imagine if you have uh, 500 tests, uh, is it possible now for you to run uh, them after every code commit as a part of CI? Uh, of course, it's not because we can see from uh, the numbers of um, hours uh, that will take us to run. For example, if to use sequential run, uh, 50 tests will run about uh, six hours. And uh, now it's time to think about running tests in parallel on different shards, because shredded run will take us only 30 minutes to run about um, 500 tests. So here we can see a big difference. And uh, that's why today we speak on this topic. Uh, so parallel testing uh, gives us the possibility, first of all, to increase test coverage and decrease time of running tests. And uh, as a result, uh, it's ensure quality of our product, which is what we all strive for. Um, and a few words about parallel testing and sharding. So uh, sometimes we uh, can be really confused by these two definitions. And uh, parallel testing, it's about running tests on different devices uh, with different configurations on different browsers. And it's more about compatibility testing. And uh, sharding tests, uh, um, running uh, tests on different shards, it means to really uh, decrease time uh, for running tests. And it, uh, it, it is what we want today to discuss and what we want to uh, get. Uh, so we were at the point when the um, need for running tests in Perl emerged. And uh, we started thinking about um, the tools that we have on the market. We did market research and we found out that we have only one native tool, uh, which was export at that time. And of course, it was great news because it's really uh, cool for iOS developers to use just export for running tests in Perl. Uh, but uh, what was our disappointment when we found out uh, a big limitations of uh, export as a tool for running tests in Perl? And uh, we can uh, check how it works from our short demo. So you know that from Xcode 10, we have them uh, possibility to run tests in parallel, just using this option, execute in parallel, and uh, then we start the test plan and it uh, does all this job. Uh, so for running tests, we have uh, clones in Xcode and you can see right now that uh, clone number two and three are working and clone number one doesn't work and um, a big spoiler, it uh, will start during the whole session. Uh, so it's, uh, of course, not the best scenario, as it um, happens a bit randomly. And um, at the end of this session, uh, we don't have any um, mechanism to reboot our simulators. So the tests ended and that's all. And then, uh, of course, we can go to the file with the results uh, of this run. And we have them, but we have uh, them only on this Mac instance and from this Mac instance. So first of all, we are limited uh, by only uh, one Mac instance. Uh, also, we can use only simulators, uh, no possibilities to run this uh, test on devices. And we are limited by number of simulators um, as uh, um, we, we, uh, we can run them on only about uh, five simulators. and. Uh, for some machines, it could be even less. And from this demo, you can see that it's kind of uh, flaking. Uh, so um, thinking about all these limitations, uh, the engineers developers start, started thinking about um, building our own uh, tool, which will really change the situation with the running tests uh, in parallel and really decrease time on running tests. Uh, so now SIFT is what we have for this. Uh, it's open source tool, so it's free to use. You can get it just from our GitHub repository and uh, use it for projects. Uh, you can run on-premise and on cloud, which makes this tool really flexible. 
Uh, you can run it on several Mac instances, which is the main difference and uh, the main advantage of this tool. Uh, so you can really scale up the process of running, just adding one or more Mac instance, and you can add as many as you need, um, as you want for projects. Uh, here we can use not only simulators, but devices too. And for some features, it could be essential. Uh, so we don't have any limits with Sift. And uh, now this tool is something which is really time saving and you can really decrease and scale down the time for running tests. And also it's easy to use. So it's uh, like a Swiss army knife for a software tester today. And um, I want to give you uh, instruction how to set up Sift because sometimes it could be a uh, real difficult when you start using uh, a new tool. But uh, if to speak about Sift, it should be truly easy as we can discuss it just in the scope of today's webinar. So you can do it just in uh, six steps. Uh, so the first you go to our um, GitHub repository, clone the project and uh, install it on your machine. Um, then uh, 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 from step number two and three, you just need to run two commands from the terminal and uh, first uh, sage make a sage. And then uh, when you are ready with this command, you run Swift build C release, which builds this tool and uh, Swift is ready to be used. And the next part uh, that you have to do is just to create config JSON file where you're going to make all the configurations. So for this, uh, for this you go to the folder build, uh, which can be hidden. So you have to make sure to make it unhidden. And then from this folder, you go to release folder and uh, create here config JSON file uh, where you have to write all the configurations for your uh, Mac, uh, Mac instances, for your machines, for your devices and simulators. And then uh, you just have to run the command uh, sift run config config JSON. And uh, this is what starts the whole process. Uh, uh, tests start running. And uh, after that, you uh, get results of these tests. And uh, that's all about setting up process. Um, so here you can see an example of um, config JSON file. Uh, you, you can find the same example on our GitHub repository in the readme file, and you can just copy this and uh, change the uh, values for these keys uh, for your own, so you can customize it uh, for your project. And uh, now we have a short demo how to use uh, Sift. So here you can see that we have terminal opened and in the terminal, we run the common sift run config config JSON. And um, as I said, it starts the whole process. Um, it uh, creates the build and exit test run file and um, folders for simulators in workspace uh, folder. And uh, then uh, we can see that our two simulators start running tests at the same time in parallel. And after a few time, uh, you are starting getting results in the terminal of this test, but more of or over you have the results in the final folder. And um, at the end of uh, running Sift, we have the reboot system for our simulators, which uh, is really uh, convenient for CI system. Um, and after at the end of all this, you go to the um, XC result file and find all the results from all uh, machines, from all devices and simulators. Uh, but what is more important, we have also the format of uh, XML file, uh, which is for JUnit. And also we have the uh, formats with the results in TXT and JSON formats, so really convenient. And now again, I have to mention some benefits of SIG, the uh, abilities of this uh, tool. Um, I have to say that SIG can be used not only for testers, but uh, for developers as well, because we can run UI tests and unit tests uh, with this tool. Uh, SIG supports not only devices, but simulators. And uh, for some features, it could be really essential to run uh, it on real device. Uh, Sift runs on any CI and sends results on any report system you use. And uh, it accumulates all the results on your main machine from all the machines that you used to, for sharding uh, your tests. And um, as I said, you have uh, formats of uh, JSON, TXT, XML, and C result files. 
uh, Sift can run locally or uh, on any cloud system, and it makes these two really flexible. And we have the rerun capability uh, for our flaky tests, and you can uh, customize it in your config JSON file, so you can uh, give it any number you want, any number that you want to rerun your tests. Uh, Sift is scalable by means of multiple Mac instances, so you can add as many Macs, as, as many machines as you need for a project and uh, really scale up the process of testing. And um, the stability of uh, Sift is really high if to compare with industry average, uh, for which we have 85%. Uh, but for SIFT, we have on average 98%, which is really um, kind of um, close to 100. And um, it's open source tool. You can get it for free just uh, um, following this link that you can uh, see here. And um, I have to say that we have a big gift for um, mobile testers because we have not only for iOS platform, but we have the same tool for Android platform. Uh, and it's written in Kotlin and you can get it by following the second link from this um, slide. And uh, when you start running a sift and uh, maybe you will have some, um, uh, some questions about this, some issues. So, Please guys, don't hesitate to contact us and we'll be happy to help you uh, with any information, with any uh, issues. So uh, you're welcome. And uh, I have to mention that, uh, yes, Ingenious is focused on uh, test automation and we have a great, um, uh, a great course uh, it's for ios test automation and if you are interested in this topic you can just follow the link and get the uh, course on udemy that we have and uh thanks for your attention um if you have any questions you can ask me right now or you can also join us on facebook and youtube and you will find a lot of great information about uh testing test automation and other things Thank you so much uh, for a great presentation, Julia. Uh, it's time for Q&A session. Um, I see there are people, uh, Anton, ask you. Oh, okay, it was just was a thank you. No, anybody else have any questions? So uh, let's wait for maybe 30 seconds if anybody pop anything. Um, just wanna, while you are thinking about questions, I uh, just wanna summarize everything that what Julia said. Um, Ingenious, team has started the uh, SIFT as an open source um, solution for the reason of, as I mentioned, pain points. Yes, there, there are different uh, solutions out there that advertise they can parallelize the testing for XUA test and Espresso. However, either, either those uh, open source solutions are not supported for the past few years, or they are not scaling, or they're not uh, reliable. Remember, in order for CI tests to qualify, uh, you know, in the enterprise level, they have to uh, meet two requirements, reliability and the speed. And in order to achieve that, you need to have a craft a solution that A, is native, right? So it could be supported by the community. And SIFT is native. It's written in Swift uh, uh, programming language. And it actually, uh, uh, everything that you used in SIFT is 100% pertained to the Xcode development. So it's nothing that is like Python or Java. It's 100% uh, native uh, in terms of the engineering stack. So anybody from uh, uh, IES community can support that. Uh, number one. Uh, number two, um, uh, we built something that scales, right? Uh, on any level, cloud, local premises, doesn't matter anything. Right, and then and most importantly is the transparency, right? Reporting system. So we actually have a rerun and aggregated reports that help us to scale enterprise level. So uh, um, please try it out. This video can uh, source you as the tutorial. Plus we have a tutorial on a uh, GitHub page. Uh, I literally encourage everybody to try it out. If you have XUA tests in your company and you would like to scale. Again, just to summarize and note again what Julia mentioned, this is not only one stack with support. Sift is only supporting, uh, also supporting Android as well, 
right? So we have similar solution for Android um, uh, and there is a CIF repository for Android available. Uh, we're gonna share all the links in the follow-up email, uh, including this presentation. So you, you folks can take a look at this. So again, um, oh, by the way, we just got a question. So let's, let's read them. Um, uh, if I'm absolutely new to the mobile automation testing, what roadmap would you suggest me to get comfortable with the SIFT and XUI test both in such way that I can call myself a real mobile test automation expert? Very good question. Obviously, uh, you would like to start with the basics. Uh, and basics, uh, I recommend to start with the fundamentals of uh, IES development. Take any Udemy course, uh, they're like $14, $20. It's a very small investment uh, on IES development. You don't have to complete the entire course, but at least half of it to understand what is actually Xcode environment, how to write application in uh, SIFT. Um, so yes, I would start with IES development and um, uh, slowly transit into the um, uh, slowly transit into the XUA test, right? Because without understanding how the uh, how to build an iPhone application fundamentally, um, you wouldn't understand how to test it. Again, fundamental knowledge. You do not have to spend uh, six months to learn IS development. Uh, I think like one month will, will be more than enough and you feel more than comfortable to work in an export environment. Then you can take XUA test course. We actually offer one uh, on Udemy. It's also like, you know, a very reasonable price. Um, you can uh, do that and learn that. Um, and after that, absolutely, once you start building the uh, test automation framework at your company, um, you can start leveraging SIFT. SIFT is something that only needed when you have hundreds of tests, right? Uh, if you are running like uh, somewhat like around 50, you know, 30 to 50 tasks, you need that. Once you start scaling on enterprise level, you will 100% need that. So that's in a nutshell the, uh, the, the roadmap that I recommend if you choose the uh, IES stack. If you choose Android stack, it's a similar way. You pick up Android development course, learn about Espresso, and then go with the SIFT when you, you need it, right? Okay, um, it was mentioned about the Mac instances. Uh, is it dedicated only for Macs? Absolutely. Um, uh, as you probably understand that native IES uh, is not running anywhere else. You cannot run on Linux, you cannot run it on Windows. Uh, if you are iPhone developer, right? Uh, not necessarily iPhone, even Mac OS X developer for Macs, right? Or for Apple Watch. Any Apple product development is happening on Xcode and Xcode only runs on the uh, Mac. So in order to execute your tests, you need only Mac instances. And you will learn this one way or another. This is unfortunate truth. Mac instances are expensive. Absolutely, but they have no choice. I mean, you're dealing with number one monetizing applications in the world. So you have to deal with the Mac environment. Um, Okay, question. Are you planning to do any IES courses for Udemy or in the group future? Yes, we actually do have a course on Udemy. And uh, we will send the email, follow-up email with our presentation, with the uh, link to the repository on SIF, as well as our uh, XUA test course on Udemy. It's a very comprehensive course. It covers all beginner's topics and very advanced topics, such as like network stubbing. Um, and like I said, um, pricing wise, I think Olena will offer even the discounts, very, very reasonable price. I'm not, I don't remember exactly, but it's somewhere like, you know, you know a couple of dollars, like literally, like, like all Udemy courses, below 100 for sure. So it's very reasonable. Um, I guess I don't see any more answers. So let us thank you everybody to, oh, here we go. Here it is. We have a link. Uh, again, uh, you don't have to worry about anything. Everything we talk about, you will receive in the follow-up email. Um, and uh, thank you all for attending today's webinar. And then